Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Mixer Review. And uh, if you've clicked on this, you know we're going to be talking about six strings. And um, I've reached out to six strings. So hopefully I get, by the time that this show is now airing, he'll be in the chat. So if you are in the chat, how's it six strings? If not, I hope you catch this. Um, everybody that is in chat, thank you very much for joining us. Um, also, thanks to Fresh for letting us run this after his show. It's nice to have you guys in chat back week after week supporting us. It's super cool to see that. So thank you very much. So I'll kick off, guys. Um, and I'll talk about PDQ. Um, now, this is simple, um, delicious strawberry ice cream. Okay, that's really what it is. The, the, the description goes, this is a simple and as well as delicious, delicious must-use liquid barn vanilla ice cream. The recipe goes, now listen carefully, 10% TFA strawberry, right? 3% sweet strawberry, 5% LB vanilla ice cream, 2% vanilla whipped cream. Okay, so um, you might, uh, the total percentage here is 20%. Um, and the total strawberry percent here is 13%. And that might raise a few eyebrows, okay? I tested this in my 20. 22 flavor atty so you know if there was anything funky i'm definitely going to pick it up and i'm definitely going to be talking over here about it but um even though that might freak a couple of people out this was just full on flavor without any off notes which is so bizarre because i thought you know using strawberries at that high percentage things will show but it just didn't which is a nice surprise for me okay now, uh, the strawberry mix here is, is, or the strawberry base here is strawberry ripe, ripe and strawberry sweet, which is a trial and tested combination. I think the only difference here really is the percentages which we just covered, right? That also might have been done because um, strawberry ripe will pull back a little bit after a good steep. And then, um, you know, what you're left with is not that much strawberry flavor, you know, as what you initially started out with. If you tasted it okay but i think what really is the beauty here for me and super simple you know is this uh ice cream base which is five percent vanilla ice cream lb and two percent cap vanilla whipped cream um, super simple seven percent um but it's easily one of the most delicious uh ice cream bases that i've tasted before now i'm not sure if that is you know something unique or if that came from somewhere else but, you know, just a, a bit of an applause there for using that in here. This is a super simple profile, but just done correctly. Um, I get two layers from this. I think the strawberry ripe helps it out right at the top. Um, and because vanilla, um, LB vanilla ice cream is used at 5%, you know, it brings a lot of body to this mix. So it's nice and heavy. Um, and yeah, super enjoyable enjoyable and for that and for the simplicity of this whole thing i'm gonna go ahead and give a tip of the banger straight off the bat deets so i did blue strawberry milk by six strings and i'm going to start with her description here You've all heard of blue raspberry, now meet blue strawberry, a delicate creamy blueberry strawberry milk that pops at day 14. No substitutions are recommended, not recommended at anything less than 14 days steep. So I'm going to start with the percentages here. 1.5% blueberry extra, TPA blueberry extra, 1% FA cream fresh, 3% FA juicy strawberry, 0.2% TPA raspberry sweet and 3% strawberry ripe, 0.2% cap super sweet and then finally 2.5% vanilla swirl. This, this was a very interesting recipe for me because for some reason when someone tells me not to do something I generally go and do it. So 
when they say do not vape it at before 14 days, I try to vape it every day before the 14 days. Pretty much what I get was the blueberry is definitely there. Uh, I get the strawberries, everything's there, but it's a little bit floating around loose. So definitely go with a recommendation of 14 days because it's for some strange reason. You can try it any day before day 14 and you will get well, I got mainly the raspberry, which was very strange because, yes, raspberry sweet is a strong concentrate, but at 0.2%, it's really not that strong, especially in combination with something like strawberry ripe and then the blueberry extra. In my mind, it should have kind of faded away right from the start, but it didn't. It was for the first few, uh, the first seven days about, that was mainly what I got. It's a, a, a nice milk and the strawberries and blueberries is there, but... I get the, the raspberry. And for me, the raspberry, that sweet, overly sweetness is always there for raspberry. That's why I, I tend to stay away from raspberry. But with this recipe, I get that raspberry. I get that sweetness from it. It's not overly, but it's there. So I enjoyed this recipe regardless for the first seven days. With the first seven days fast, I decided I'm going to give it the 14 days. And interestingly, this recipe popped at day 14. Which is very weird. I've got to give a props for this recipe. It's really interesting when, when, when something that went seven days and in my mind has steep changes as much as this recipe changes on day 14. The blueberry and strawberry really, um, really, uh, how can I say, shows in, in the mix after the 14 days. That raspberry kind of drops back. I don't get the raspberry profile. I get the sweetness that's rounding off and complementing the strawberry profile. And that blueberry extra really changes to a pop. Popping is the real, is, is a really good description of what it does. It pops at day 14. And I think the pop comes from the blueberry used here. Um, vanilla swirl is always a winner. So I really enjoyed vanilla swirl in here. But the recipe from day 14, this it's, I can't explain why it's happening. I can put it to the blueberry, but it works. And it really works very well after day 14. I will be mixing this recipe up again. It is a delicious recipe at 11.45%. And it's full of flavor, especially after day 14. I mean, it, it gets better. The, the, the flavors blend in so well. That strawberry, firstly, the two strawberries blend together to give you a very full and rich ripe strawberry, a sweet strawberry. And I think the sweetness is, is, is kind of com or, um, pushed or complemented from the raspberry without no noticing the raspberry. You get that full strawberry. And to me, it's kind of laced or wrapped in that blueberry, but a very nice full blueberry. With me, I, I generally struggle to find blueberry, even with blueberry extra. I, I, I either have to mix it ridiculously high where I start getting off notes or funny aftertastes from it, or I don't get it at all. And with this 1.5% at day 14, it's like it wasn't there until day 14, which is, it's great. The way this recipe changed, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this recipe and I'm enjoying vaping it or what's left of it. Actually, I can't find it. There's about two mil left of my 40 mil sample I, make, I mixed up. So very, very delicious recipe. And thank you. I will give this also a tip of the banger and a first bump. <laughs> thank you. Right. My first one that I went for was Kanjariwi, which she describes as a light, refreshing summer mixture of cantaloupe, sweet tangerine, kiwi, Fuji, apple, pear, and cactus. Now that is immediately interesting for me. I mean, one sees a lot of pure fruit recipes, but not too many that mix six different fruits together without, you know, anything behind them, no sweet, no nothing like that. It's just a mix of six fruits. So let's have a look at the recipe and the percentages. It's half a percent of FA Fuji, three quarters of a percent of Inuwera cactus, one and a half percent of uh, TFA Kiwi Double, three quarters of a percent of FA Melon Cantaloupe, 1% of FA pear and 4% of cap sweet tangerine. Now, there's an awful lot going on there. There's an awful lot of layering and complementing and boosting and, you know, all, all the sort of reactions that, that happen in mixing. In her notes, um, she notes that it's a strange mix, but that it's very, very appealing to her. She says that the, the Kiwi Double 
and the Cap Suite Tangerine are the, are the two main players that play off against each other. On the Kiwi double side, she's using the Pear and the Fuji to boost the double. Uh, she's using the Cantaloupe to offset the, um, the Sweet Tangerine, and then the Cactus comes in in its usual role of, of adding that sort of moistness, wetness to the, to the whole thing. Um, now that is how, how she vapes, and it was interesting to me how differently um, I got it. Not necessarily in a bad way, but I'll, I'll just kind of outline what I'm getting from it. Um, the first thing for me, the interesting thing is, is the F.A. Melon Cantaloupe. That flavor is marked for me with quite a dry, earthy melon rind. Uh, it's a very distinctive flavor. I can pick it up in basically any juice that F.A. Melon Cantaloupe is used in. I'm getting that coming through quite clearly in, in this juice, but it forms almost like a, a base layer. Sticking out from that, in the center, I've got that green kiwi and pear note with the cactus, kind of all forming together to form this, this sort of green pillar that sticks up out of, this, out of this rind that's on the base. And then enveloped around the edge of that, I have this very soft, gentle tangerine that is actually, other than the Fuji, which, I, which I, I can't taste, I mean, I suspect it's just in there for sweetness and, and to help other things pop a little bit. But other than the Fuji, the tangerine is actually the flavor that I'm tasting the least in this mix, which is, is odd for me because I don't think I'm citrus blind. It's, it's not an old um, concentrate. I, I refilled my cap sweet tangerine quite, quite recently. So it's, it's just interesting for me that that the flavor that is the highest in terms of percentage, I mean, it's only an 8.5% recipe. Half of that is cap sweet tangerine. And the tangerine is basically an accent for me. Uh, that melon cantaloupe comes through very clearly, even at three quarters of a percent. I'm getting the kiwi, the pear, the cactus, that's, that's all hanging together, sort of kind of in the middle of the vape. Uh, and it's pleasant. Um, I'm always wary of cactus because I don't want to be tasting cactus. I don't like the taste of anywhere cactus. I can taste it in this recipe, uh, but it's it's not bothering me. Similarly, that melon cantaloupe dry earthy rind taste quite often bothers me. Again, in this, it's not bothering me. I don't know if it's the pear that's soften, softening it, maybe the, the combination with the kiwi double. But this is a very interesting recipe for me, it's a very pleasing recipe, simply because of how much is going on. You can, you can take drags of this where, you know, one drag is different from the next. It depends on how wet your wicks are. It depends on, you know, how deep your inhale is. It depends what you, even what you're expecting uh, from it. If you're searching for, you know, say the pear, suddenly you'll taste that. But then the next um, vape, you, you're just vaping it you know, without your mind on anything. And everything kind of hangs together really nicely. As I say, that tangerine I really need to search for. If I vape it while I'm searching for it, it's it's there. But just vaping it off the bat as a juice, you know, the, the tangerine is, is not what would strike me immediately. So it's, it's a fascinating mix. Not, not too many mixes mix uh, six fruits together in the, those wide ranges with you know, all those different interactions, those chemical interactions happening. So um, I would say it's my taste experience isn't the same as, as hers. Not necessarily that that's a bad thing. I find this very pleasant and, and interesting um, uh, juice to vape, but just in a slightly different way and with slightly different weightings and, and conclusions that she gets to. So uh, this definitely gets fist pumped from me because it's it's a daring recipe. It, it mixes together a lot of different things. It hopes to achieve a lot of different chemistries going on and it, it does do that. Uh, it manages to make cactus uh, uh, taste good, which is an achievement for me. It manages to taste them. It manages to make the millet cantaloupe taste good, uh, which is again an achievement for me. So it's uh, it's complex and accomplished um, mixing. And um, thank you for that six strings. 
Yeah. I've never heard you say anything, well, really that good about cactus, you know, the, the taste of cactus, you know, in a way. Uh, so that's quite usually, something. <laughs> yeah. Usually it's a turn off for me. If I can, maybe not taste that cactus, I decide. Uh, and the same with the melon cantaloupe, that, that dry rind note, the moment I taste it, uh, you know, the juice isn't that great for me anymore. Both of these end there, but you still get a pleasant juice at the end of it. So, you know, that takes some doing and, and congrats to her on, on that. I mean, these are just, this is my personal damage. It's not an overall thing in mixing that people don't like cactus or melon cantaloupe. For me it is, and yet neither of them is a negative factor in this mm. juice. So that, you know, that's a big plus there. So I also mixed up blue strawberry milk. I, I actually wanted to talk about it first, just to see what, what his take was on it. And, you know, I agree largely, you know, from, from my taste bud perspective, what Dietz was saying. Um, the only thing that, that I picked up, um, and I've got it here in my notes. So um, the, two uh, or the strawberry if a juicy strawberry you know i don't know if i'm the only one but sometimes i get a slight little earthiness from it it's not a bad thing it's just it's so authentic you know um that's kind of what you get from an actual strawberry and um i, I almost feel like the um, blueberry extra you know helps that on a little bit um so the combination of the two you know and the cream was uh you know, was interesting for me, which was very authentic, almost like a smoothie, um, opposed to like a, a blended milk, you know, if, if I can, you know, give you the difference there, but this was reading like a smoothie for me more than what it was reading like a milk. Okay. Um, nothing bad about the mix. Also really like the mix, um, on the, uh, on the cream base, of course, um, uh, it was a very delicate cream, you know, so not extremely heavy. Um, I mean, it's just cream fresh here and vanilla swirl. And that's a total of, you know, 3.5% in the mix. Um, so not an extremely dense um, or heavy cream. Um, so yeah, that's, that was my findings here. Um, I would like to play around a little bit over here with some of my favorite strawberries. Uh, which would be a shisha strawberry and JF sweet strawberry um, and perhaps crank up the vanilla swirl a bit just because I prefer a little bit more body out of the mix. Um, so yeah, I also enjoyed this mix. Um, I think like Richard also said, it's different and that's what I really appreciated about this mix is it was literally a blue strawberry, you know? So yeah, thank you very much for that one. Deets, next one. Okay, so for my next one, I did sweet tree. So the description says this is just sugar cookie. No lemon, no cinnamon, just delicious baked, delicious fresh baked sugar cookies. Enjoy. If you sub cap super sweet, I wouldn't go any higher than 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. I did 0 0.5 because I wanted to go the furthest to what people say you shouldn't do. But I did that. So with the Percentages, she has them at 1.75% TPA Bavarian Cream, 1% FW Hazelnut, 2.5% TPA Marshmallow, 3.25% Sugar Cookie, Cap Sugar Cookie, and 1% TPA Sweetener. And in my case, it was 0.5% Super Sweet. So I'm going to have to go to my notes for this because there's, there's a lot. So on my notes, I have, um, <clears throat> this is one really delicious, simple, and it's simple sugar cookie. I personally enjoyed this a lot. <clears throat> As you guys know, I mix mostly fruits and beverages and very vibrant, potent, in-your-face type of mixes. That's why generally cookies and desserts and stuff doesn't appeal to me that much unless it has a fizzy tang or something in the dessert or in the icing or something very sweet. I like sweet stuff. So when it comes to cookies, what I find is that it's too, it's too strong. Now, cookies and desserts are normally more on the, if I can put it on, on a scale of almost comparing it to an acid and a, a, a alkaline 
Desserts are normally not fizzy, not not acidic, anything. It's it's laid back, it's creamy, it's soft. But with cookies specifically, they are too strong for me. It's that that sugar or intense, like spicy with cream, um, right? Vienna cream. Yes, that's that strong, spicy, sugary potentness. With cookies, it's just normally too strong for me. This is just the best, subtle, delicious, simple cookie for me. The hazelnut adds quite a lot to this profile uh, for me. It really accentuates the bake part of the cookie and it also adds a creamy fluff in terms of texture with the marshmallow. Hazelnut is really the star here. Yeah. Not, not, I mean, you wouldn't expect it because it's not really all that high. But um, it's a star here, yeah, not in the sense of flavor, but in the way that it works with the recipe. It smoothens things out almost in a creamy way, but not, not really a cream. It's, it's kind of in a textured way. The texture and back note is rounded very well by using the combination of the marshmallow and the hazelnut. <clears throat> There's just something about the combo of the hazelnut and the marshmallow to me in this recipe that gives it that deliciously smooth cookie, like baked, <laughs> baked cookie. Then the Bavarian cream here blends everything with that dark or light caramel milk type of flavor. You know Bavarian milk, I normally describe it as a, that burnt flambe type of, from sugar or caramelized sugar. It's Bavarian cream normally has that dark type of sugary note and that, that's what, what I'm referring to here as well. I used super sweet instead of sweetener and uh, as per her notes, and I would recommend this as I mixed it at 0.5% super sweet. I definitely recommend using the sweetener or super sweet as it works in terms of what the profile calls for here. Obviously the sugar. Now, sugar cookie does have that sugar going for the sugar cookie profile, but the sweetener is, for me, essential here because of what you are mixing. It's a sugar cookie. It requires the sugar. The steep is recommended for 7 to 14 days. It is, and I absolutely recommend going with the steep. I do. But this is really good literally a few hours after mixing it. It did not even go to my, my, my magnetic stirrer. I mixed it. I shaked it up. I put it down for a few hours and I've been vaping it since then. It's, it's delicious. It's a really good recipe. This recipe is composed really well. I, I, loved, I loved it when I mixed it up and it was definitely unexpected of how simple this is, but how deliciously um, complex this cookie is for me. This for me is the best sugar cookie that there is. And I'm just going to go back to the percentage of sugar cookie used here. The sugar cookie is used at 3.25%. That for me is perfection with sugar cookie. A lot of people will argue because the people with who normally mix the sugar cookie, I've noticed they mix it a bit higher. This is such a delicious cookie. So if you are looking for a sugar cookie, you have mixed all the top rated ones before. And look, there's nothing wrong with the top rated ones. They rate them for the reason. They are good. But if you are someone like me who, who, who prefers or who feels that the other sugar cookies are a bit too strong or there's some potency to it that you don't enjoy. Mix this one up. It is delicious. My favorite, my new favorite simple sugar cookie that, that I have. I will definitely be, be mixing this up a lot. Um, I can see variations of this to work as well. I mean, if you wanted to, to add something like a strawberry, I can see it definitely work. I don't know why you would because it is delicious like it is. So from me, Thank you for this recipe, Six Strings. It is delicious. I will give a full banger and two fists for this one. Delicious. Thank you. Two fists. Two fists. Two fists, two fists in a banger. Two fists for Six Strings. <laughs> we're, going, we're going all the way here. Hey, my second one was Stormborn Queen of Hearts which she describes as a mouth-watering strawberry raspberry candy. Extremely flavorful. Enjoy. Uh, let's just go through the recipe. This one is a lot less complex. It's got the same amount of flavors, six flavors, but it's, it's a lot less um, complicated than the, the previous one. Um, let's start with, the, with the, those fruity uh, top notes. It's 1% innerberry raspberry, 4.5% FA strawberry, uh, that's the old, the original strawberry, red touch, not the not the new juicy. Two uh, percent TFA strawberry, half percent TFA coconut candy, three percent uh, cap vanilla whipped cream, and one and a half percent flavor west white chocolate. Uh, 
Now my first, uh, not eye opener, but just the first note I'd make, a mouth watering strawberry raspberry candy that has no candy in it. I mean, TFA coconut candy is not really a candy. FW white chocolate is not really a candy. I mean, by candy, we're talking 27 fish, 27 bears, Swedish fish, hard candy, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of traditional candy flavors. None of those in here. Instead, she's basing it off the candy-like feel of the Inawera raspberry. Now, that's the flavor that um, Rick uh, Concrete River describes as like being a raspberry sucker that's been in someone else's mouth. Um, it's, it's wet, it's warm, <laughs> it's kind of sticky. So it's like sucking on a sucker that's already been in someone else's mouth. That's how he describes it. And it's pretty damn accurate because that's exactly what I get from it. So that is what she's hanging it off. And she says in her notes, in a way, raspberry is the best raspberry candy out there. Um, I've noticed people um, are kind of gravitating now towards the gentler raspberries, the FA, the TFA raspberry sweet. You know, Inawera raspberry is a beast of a, of, of a flavor. You've got to use it with a very light touch. You've got to be very careful how you use it. Otherwise, it just steamrolls everything. And we can see that in the way that she's balanced the flavors here. 1% Inawera raspberry against 6.5% of strawberries and for me I would reverse the order she calls it a mouth-watering strawberry raspberry candy I would call it a raspberry strawberry candy that raspberry is still front and center for me I think it's a very nice balance though because I think the strawberry just uh, softens and deepens and broadens that that raspberry it takes it out of that uh, that sort of trademark in a way a raspberry pumping in your face, you know, strong, wet, warm raspberry flavor, and it, it makes it a gentler flavor. She also uh, mentions the cap vanilla whipped cream, uh, maybe introducing a little bit of forced muting there, just playing down that in a way of raspberry a bit. What I find very interesting uh, about this, it's, it, it's a deep um, uh, fruity candy, candy mix. It's a very ple pleasant uh, mix. But the, the sort of standout thing for me in the vape is texture is the texture versus taste thing that's going on. With Inawera raspberry, you can't really get away from that sucker feel because it's like having a raspberry sucker where you've got two states. You've got the solid glass-like sucker state that's, you know, the, the part of the sucker that hasn't melted yet and then around the edge of that you've got the bit that's kind of liquefied and is now coating the inside of your mouth that's where the flavor comes from so in taste it gives you that kind of hard lollipop candy type of, of taste but then the cap vanilla whipped cream and the fw white chocolate which he says are for body and texture uh, give you a, it's like a softer candy. It's not a chewy candy. It's not jelly candy or, or Swedish fish or, or 27 bears or anything like that. It's not something that you chew, but it is a softer, uh, you know, almost like if you look, think of the texture of, of a coconut ice type of, of, of candy, not chewy, but just softer, you know, much softer than, than a hard candy. And the whole thing hangs together really well. I'm not really tasting the coconut candy in there, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to be. Uh, you know, half a percent of TFA coconut candy in the face of 1% of anywhere raspberry and 6.5% of, of two strawberries. Um, that candy is just going to, it'll be there, but it's, it's, it's not going to stand out. It hangs together very nicely for me. It's a very tasty candy. It's got great texture to it. It's got that feeling of... Uh, that lollipop feeling now i mean if you don't like that you're not going to like the recipe but then you're not going to like any recipe with anywhere raspberry in because that is what anywhere raspberry gives you i mean rick absolutely nailed the description for that that is what anywhere raspberry gives you and there are a lot of people who don't like it as a result of that i love it i mean raspberry for me is the ultimate kids food you know if i went into a shop when i was young and i had a choice of 
you know, a raspberry slushy or an apple slushy or a kiwi fruit slushy. I'm going for the raspberry. It's it's that deep red, that heavily sweetened. You know, it's just it's the kind of the kids' fruit. It's the fruit that is most easily lends itself to a candy flavour while still being extremely satisfying. Um, so anything with raspberry, raspberry, and I'm I'm a big fan of that. It takes me right back to my youth. And uh, yeah, this whole thing hangs together very very nicely. Um, so I will, I will definitely give this a, um, a fist pump uh, for using that in a raspberry, not being afraid to use that and using it so well, and a tip of the banger for this recipe hanging together so well. Dude, I can't get over the hot sucker from one mouth to another mouth. <laughs> it's like stuck in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, can't, I can't unimagine that. You know what I mean? It's if, difficult. To yeah. Me. If you know anywhere a raspberry, I mean, when I, when I saw a concrete river talking about it in his video, I thought, yes, <laughs> that is how I would describe, that's the words I've been looking for to try and describe that. And it's exactly that. You know, you've got, your kid comes or your nephew or whatever comes in with the sucker and you know what kids are like. They take the sucker out of the mouth and they hold it right in your face. You know, here, have my sucker. And you've got to because you, you don't want to hurt their feelings. And that's that. That's a, a warm, sucked sucker a right warm, in your mouth. Red, red <laughs> sucker right in your mouth. Oh, cool, man. Um, so, yeah, that pretty much brings us to the end of the episode. Um, I just wanted to thank the people in chat. Thank you so much for being here. Super awesome having you guys here, uh, talking about recipes, talking about flavors and stuff. Super humbled by that. Also wanted to thank Six Strings for the recipes you put out. Thank you so much. People in, in the chat and people watching this, if you've mixed up any of Six Strings recipes that we didn't talk about tonight, because we're only three, right? We can just do that much. Leave those in the comments below so that people can pick those up and mix them up and, and have a look at them. Then another thing is um, go join our South African mixing group. Everybody is welcome there, right? It's Mixologists on Facebook. Then um, we collaborate with a few other channels. Um, I want you to go and check that out as well. Daytime Frank, DIY Down Under, Fresh 03. And then I think the next two shows that's coming up today is DIY done under and developed so go and check out those two channels as well so thank you very much for watching guys um anything else Richard Dietz yep <clears throat> I uh, just want to say to six strings thank you for these mixes I actually had fun with them both of these juices were very interesting and uh, the sugar cookie really put me give me gave me some motivation to try more desserty stuff again I'm, I'm back liking cookie stuff so thank you for that and then again thank you for everyone in chat we really appreciate all your all your um, people joining us and having the chats and con dis discussions and everything with us join us on mixologist like you said thank you everyone uh, thanks to six strings for her body of work and for what she's these lovely recipes that she's given to the community much appreciated Cool, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheerio. Cheers. Bye.